Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode I Forget of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Very, very special episode today because we are joined by a very special guest, one of my best friends, Andrew Greeley, fresh out of prison. Ew! Welcome back, mate. Congratulations. Thank you, bro. You made it out. How long were you in for? Um, all up, nine months. Nine months? Yeah. Wow. And so, so you, how long have you been out? Uh, for maybe two weeks. Two I mean, weeks. Yeah, two weeks, yeah. Great. All right. Why don't you introduce yourself to anyone who's new? My name's Greeley. I'm a good friend of Lewis. Um, we met at a Cursor show a mm -hmm. long time ago. Uh, I'm a rapper. I've been making hip hop for yeah, a good part of 13, near 14 years. And um, I've been doing stand-up comedy for the last three, four years, thanks to Lewis. Yeah. Um, I did my first ever bid at uh, your Hobart show on the, I think it was the Try and Stop Me tour. Yeah, yep. I think so. Yeah. Yep. And then... I did the, you know, the support for you for the whole independent variable tour. Yep. And I was going to do the one last year, but I was in prison. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you, if you saw No Slide Season, I talked about how having a friend in prison makes you feel so much tougher than you actually are. Gives you street cred that you didn't earn. Yeah. And uh, now I fucking lost that, man. So <laughs> I'm really, I'm really bummed that you're out. <laughs> it's great for you, but yeah. for me, you know, I feel less tough now. I relate to music less. It's no good. <laughs> you have to make more. F I'll, I'll introduce you to some more jailbirds that will never, ever leave prison. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Real, like, murderers. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And that, that way, you know, because they only, unfortunately, they only last a few weeks out and yeah. back in. Since, since I've been out, I caught up with a good friend that I made in there, mm -hmm. and he got out like a few weeks before. Yeah. And then four days ago, I got sent a video of him being dragged into a paddy wagon by the cops. And I was just <laughs> like, I was shattered because he's a, he's a yeah. good bloke, you know. And it sucks that people get caught in a system like that. You know? Yeah. So you you were in Risden Maximum Security. Uh, no, I was I was in I, I went into Medium. Medium. Yeah. yeah. And then <clears throat> I was there for about four months. Yeah. And so there was an escape when mm. I was in jail, and because this guy escaped, they brought in all these new laws where they had to rearrange the prison. Um, so all the old murderers that were up minimum, they've yeah. been there for like 15, 20 years. They're well behaved. They're working in the prison. Well behaved murderers. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. Murderers with manners. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a, it's one thing people and a lot of people in jail have manners. Yeah. You know, you walk around the street amongst normal law-abiding citizens, and they're yeah. all rude cunts. Yeah. And you're like, well. You know, if I if I was surrounded by a bunch of people who had killed six women, I'd be very polite. You know, I'd be like, oh. It's, it's true, true. How are you going, Jack the Ripper? Are you well? <laughs> Wonderful. I'd be very nice. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, you, you, you got it, don't you? But um, so I was in Medium for a while. When they brought the laws in, they tried to move me and um, they didn't really go about it in a polite manner. And so I refused to follow their orders. <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah. they, you know, they did the whole thing. A lot of guys were saying they're not going to put you on max just for refusing. Yeah. You know, you usually got to do something pretty bad to get sent down there. Mm. But they decided to use me as an example yeah. to show to the rest of the prison you do what you're told yeah. and um, I spent a night in a place called Franklin which is like it's the worst of the worst you know yeah. um, and then I ended up in Supermax for a month right yeah and then so what, what's the difference between medium max and then Supermax is there, is there Supermax above max yeah, yeah yeah so I mean the, the part of the jail is super max compared to max. It's the exact same type of jail. Yeah. The only difference is how often you're allowed out of your cell. Yeah. And in super max, you're only allowed out for an hour. Wow. Ma maybe if you're lucky. I think in the month that we had three days that we got let out for an hour in the morning and then an hour in the afternoon. Yeah. But generally, it was only an hour in either the morning or the arvo. And I probably spent about a total of two weeks just locked down completely. Wow. Where we weren't allowed out of our cell. And do you have a cellmate? I did for the first two weeks. Yeah. And yeah, he was a bit hard to put up with. He was very racist. Yeah. Very sexist. Yeah. Um, you know, so I just sat there and bit my tongue for a couple of weeks. And, mm. and in these cells, you know, it's just it's a bunk bed, a little kind of desk off the end of the bed, a shelf, a toilet and a shower. So you have to wake up to the sound of someone taking a shit. 
every morning. Oh, that's not good. No, I ke- I've got this little air freshener. It's like an yeah. air wick freshener you can buy off the canteen, and I yeah. keep it up on my mattress. Yeah. And as soon as I wake up to the sound of his shit hitting a metal <laughs> toilet, I just grab the air freshener and just sit there, put the pillow over my head, and just go to my happy place, just rocking back and forth. <laughs> oh, no. Because <laughs> yeah, I guess jail food wouldn't produce the most healthy poos. Nah, it makes everyone fart. Really? And everyone's fart smells the same because they're all eating the same food. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who did so, that? Fuck, it could be anyone. Yeah, the whole yard. Like, yeah. And then you've got, you know, you've got 200 people walking in circles just farting. Yeah. Yeah. Just walking into the person in front of yeah. them's fart. Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. Cop yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, and then passing it on. In, in your nose, out your ass. It's pretty close to the human centipede. You know, it could just be the same <laughs> fart. There's it only be. ever been one 200-year-old <laughs> fart and everyone's just inhaling and exhaling it through their ass. It's a cycle. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me at all. That, that sounds about right. Mm. But coincidentally, um, yeah, I was in this double up with this guy for two weeks and one of the screws came over and goes, oh, I like The you. screw's a jail guard. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a jail guard. And he came over and he goes, I like your music, mate. Do you want a single cell? And I was like, fuck yeah. Great. Can't complain. So I got up into a single cell for two weeks. <clears throat> And then, um, but didn't you just go nuts not talking to anyone? Yeah, so you still talk like everyone sits at the bottom of their doors and just yells out and. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, you, you you still talk and it's very loud and echoey because you got yeah. like twenty people yelling out and yeah, you got someone from the cell down over here trying to talk to the cell upstairs over yeah. here and. <clears throat> so it's like yeah. a it's a giant group chat. Yeah, it's very echoey. Yeah, but um. Yeah, so, you, you know, and then <clears throat> because in Supermax it also, like, <clears throat> they bring certain people in for protection yeah, um, and keep them in their cell because they only let out a few guys. But like, they don't let out everyone for the same hour. Yeah. You know, they let out, like, three people that they know don't have any problems with each other yeah. for an hour, say, like, 8 o'clock until 9, and then I'll put them away and they'll let three other ones out for an yeah. hour, I'll put them away, and then they'll let the, the ones in protection out so that yeah. no, it's, no one can bash each other. Right, so it's like it's like murderers 6 to 8, pedophiles 8 to 9. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, there was fucking... So there was some pretty funny moments in there, man. Like the, this pedophile that's known as 6,000 ended up getting brought into Supermax. Why, why is he called 6,000? Because he was caught with 6,000 compu- uh, pictures of kids on his computer. <laughs> but I actually Googled him and it's 34,000. Oh, really? Yeah, but I'm just... It just gonna, doesn't have the ring that 6,000 Yeah, 6,000 does sound better. Yeah, yeah. And some guys named him that when, when he came into jail and he just copped it. <laughs> 6, and so <clears throat> we're all in our cells, like, and you yeah. hear someone getting brought in and, you know, you got, like, a little window about that big to look out of your cell door and you can see, yeah. and all of a sudden in comes the screws with 6,000. Yeah. <clears throat> and the whole unit's just going, 6,000, you kid fucking dog, you know, like, and... Yeah, terrorising. As soon as he's walked in, he's like, ah, and he tried to run away, like in cuffs, and the screws yeah. dragging him back in, put him in the cell, and then so for a week, everyone's just yelling out, "Kill yourself, you fucking <laughs> maggot! Kill yourself, you oh, fucking no. pedo dog!" And then he's sitting there just kicking the door, trying yeah. like just going bang, 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 and everyone's like, "Don't make it worse for yourself." Yeah, yeah, and um, it was a loud week. Yeah, fuck. And coincidentally, I know someone in Hobart whose brother used to play Dungeons and Dragons with 6,000. Yeah. Yeah, and so I told everyone that. What, did he play a level 34 child molester? (laughs) (laughs) Damn. But, um, yeah, I told everyone that, and then they terrorised him again. And and then I found out, apparently, Tazzy's so small, he used to catch up with a bunch of other sort of D&D nerds Mm. And they'd go to a graveyard at night and role-play being vampires. That's fucking <coughs> weird. That's how little there is to do in Tassie. <laughs> it's like it's either you dress up as a vampire at the cemetery or you fuck kids. <laughs> it's the only two activities. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, and um, so I told everyone that. And then all yeah. of a sudden, you know, when fellas were getting out, they'd be at his cell door going, you think you're a fucking vampire, do you, you fucking dog? I'll, cut, I'll bite your face off. Like, just... <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's really like... It just sounds like high school bullying, but instead of nerds and, and jocks, it's like rapists or murderers. Yeah. Everyone has their own clique. Pretty much. So so when yeah. you were in there, because what did you go away for? What did I go to jail yeah. for? Punching someone at a pub mm. <coughs> for tagging the venue. Yeah. Yeah, guy was tagging the venue. It was my mate's dad's pub, so I'm, I've got a lot of attachment to this venue. Yeah. I went to a concert. 
<clears throat> I walked out the front of the gig at the end of the night and there was a hippie anarchist yeah. um, Sea Shepherd jumper wearing yeah. sort of guy yeah. riding Form 1 Planet on the front of the pub. Uh. Um, I got into an argument with him because he was trying to explain to me how people need to come together and overthrow the corporate, blah, blah, blah. And he's tagging a fucking pub. Yeah, exactly. Where independent artists are performing. Exactly. Good one, bro. Go hit up a bank, maybe. Start yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, straight up. But, yeah, so I got into a stupid argument. Um, he was pretty provocative. Yeah. And I was pretty drunk. I lost my temper and I punched him a few times. And I broke his jaw in two places. Um, he didn't go to hospital and after a week it developed into a life-threatening infection mm. where uh, he had to be induced into a coma for 20 days and then when he woke up from his coma he refused to take his medication discharged himself from hospital right told the doctor he's going to treat it with cannabis oil <laughs> Fuck. and then people really think that shit cures everything yeah I it know, might right. cure a few things that maybe we're not using it for yeah but it doesn't fix a fucking broken jaw no. you idiot no that's exactly it and so it got worse and it got infected again. And, and it was all, it was back in 2016, so it's mm. like four years ago now, you know? Yeah, because you've, you've been dealing with like that legal battle. Because mm. so, I remember you were going to jail and then you were getting off and then mm. it, it, you thought it, nothing had happened and then it came back. It was yeah. like and then I went such to a jail, long process. And then I got out of jail yeah. after two months and um, they appealed, the prosecution appealed my sentence. So... I went back to court. My lawyer was like, don't worry, it's going to take months. If you do go back in, it's going to take months, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I went back to court just to show face because I thought that would help. Yeah. And 20 minutes later, I'm back in the cells underneath the Supreme Court. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. yeah. And then I was in there for seven months. That's crazy. Yeah. So, but in terms of like what you did compared to the, the rest of the inmates, were you on like the lower end of things or... How do you mean? Like where, where like your, was your offence like less serious than no, most the, of you, the other you people? you got guys in there for drink driving. Yeah. You've got like, <clears throat> with the way FEOs are, do you know much about FEOs? No. So they're family violence orders. Yes, yeah, yeah, FEO. And yeah. Um, like there's, there's this one 20 year old who's a young guy, um, his baby passed away. Yeah. And so the night that his baby had passed away, him and his girlfriend got drunk, had an argument. No violence. Mm. The neighbours called the cops. The cops rock up, put an FVO on them so they're not allowed to be ne near each other. Yeah. And then when he went to go to his baby's funeral, the cops rocked up and arrested him at the funeral because really? he's within uh, 500 metres of his partner, you know. But she would have known that he was coming. Yeah, yeah. She didn't call him. That's disgusting. Yeah. So, you know, there's... And, like, that poor kid, yeah. like... He hasn't been violent. He hasn't done, you know, like... Oh, so he's in prison for violating the order yeah. for trying to attend his own child's funeral. Yeah. Rather than for an actual crime. Yeah. And That's the, and and the, the woman is, didn't even call the cops. That's fucked. Yeah, and he, like, just before that even went to court, he was in there for three months. And when it got to court, the judge was like, oh, this is stupid, and threw it out. But yeah. still, he's been in jail for three months. You know what I mean? It's just... yeah. So there's there's a lot of guys that you know there's a lot of a lot more serious people in there for serious offences but yep. there's just there's heaps of people in there just for like drink driving or mm. you know just a lot of FEOs is the common one yeah like yeah and that that poor kid I was telling you about he ended up getting out and he caught up with her again and then <clears throat> cops ended up putting him in jail again and I think he's back in there now and he's done a total of nine months and I don't think he's ever been violent. Like, that's crazy you know so <clears throat> he's serving more time than i did and i broke someone's jaw yeah and he didn't he Just hasn't been violent you saw know? a girl that doesn't even doesn't even want him to not see him yeah yeah she doesn't she's trying to catch up with him you know what i mean weird and, and he's not allowed to but what else are you going to do when you're the person that you care about wants to see you you know what i mean and yeah yes yeah, it's, it's <clears throat> don't get me wrong i'm sure there, there's like a lot of certain situations where those orders are needed. Yeah. And um, But the way that they use it, like as a blanket, sort of mm. just everyone that has a... If anyone has an argument, breaks a window, boom, FEO, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. There's it, definitely... There needs to be something done about it. A bit yeah. more of a careful way of analysing situations. I'm not sure about the answer, but it's definitely mm. not... It doesn't fix anything. Seems like a bit of a band-aid. Yeah, it is. And then, you know, once you put someone... Like, I was very lucky, you know, I've got a lot of good friends, a lot of support. Yeah. Um, when I got out, you know, a uh, place to live, people to support me, you mm. know. 
And I really feel for a lot of guys in there because they don't have much of that. And then they get thrown into jail for a year and then they get out and they've got nothing because yeah. everyone's moved on. And oh, It's so hard to like to keep in contact because mm. I was trying because yeah. I, knew, I knew it was going to be hard. I didn't think it was going to be as hard as it was yeah. like just trying to get approved to visit you yeah. and then and then send you letters some of my letters you didn't even get yeah i know yeah shit like which is just fucking weird <coughs> i don't know if i wrote the wrong thing or if they never were arrived yeah. or whatever there, there's all sorts that, that happened heaps of the times and if then if they don't like a letter they can confiscate it and yeah things like that so yeah it's um yeah it's it's, it's a broken system in many ways so how did this guy escape? Like, how do you right. escape from <clears throat> maximum security no, he, prison? He escaped from minimum. From minimum, so okay. So I was in medium One with sec. him. Yeah, You're right. I was in medium with him. Yeah. And I swear he'd been planning it for like a year or two. Yeah. Because originally this bloke was like 130 kilos. Yeah. And he fasted and trained every day and jogged on the spot. And till he oh, got so down he to was like training. Yeah, sixty five kilos. He got down really skinny. Wow. To the point where people would walk in and wouldn't recognise him, you know? Yeah. And he got real fit and like um when he came into my unit and medium, he just paced all the time, shadow boxing, just yeah. like in his own zone. And I swear he was just waiting for that moment, you know. What was he in for? Shooting at a cop. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> so very serious yeah. shit. Yeah, and he'd been in there for about six years, I think. Yeah. And I think he only had two to go. Oh, that seems silly. Yeah, I know. But, you know, each their own. Yeah. He, he wanted out. <clears throat> and um, so he got from medium up to minimum. <clears throat> so yeah. he, he stay well behaved so he could get up to minimum. So what, so what freedoms do you get in minimum compared to medium? Um, it's different times. Because I, I went and when I visited you, I went into minimum, didn't I? First it was a medium. Yeah, first it was a medium. And the that second was... time was up a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. So when 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 I visited Greeley in minimum, they were like, "Oh, just this way," and they just sent me into the prison, like not in the corridors, like just into the prison yard. And yeah. there were just all these people bouncing balls, and I was like, "Fuck, I'm <laughs> in the prison." I wasn't yeah. like in the visitor center. I was inside the fucking prison with all these all yeah. these prisoners walking around. I'm like, all these guys going, "Yep, how you going, mate?" I'm like, "Fuck, I don't know what you've done. <laughs> how you going?" Yeah. And then uh, just just got in there. And I was like, "Oh, fuck." Seems pretty... I think they could have just left, really, as I came in. Yeah, well, minimums, like... They get, they, they've even got, like... There's a, the highest stage you can get. They've got a house that's actually outside the prison. Yeah. And they let, like, the, the best behaved top three of the whole prison actually live in the house outside. Wow. And they could leave any time, you know? Yeah. But they're on such good behaviour yeah. that they trust them. There was yeah. one guy that actually got out to that house... Yeah. ...and said to one of the screws, Oh... If I had to be easy to escape here, and then boom, he was sent straight back to Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, that, of all the shit you could say, yeah. that shouldn't be the first thing. No, that should it. be like, "Wow, a bed and windows." Yeah, yeah. thanks. Not yeah. fuck. I, so, I'll just go. So minimum, it's the old jail. Like, yep. So medium and max is all only about eighteen years old, I think. It Whereas, was very different. Yeah, minimum is like the old... It used to yeah. be the old Max back in the 80s. Yeah. But since they built the new part, they turned the old Max into the, the minimum sort mm. of thing. And um, and that was was where Chopper was, did you yeah, say? Yeah, I think he was yeah, originally in the For old jail up there, yeah. Yeah. All the, all the old kind of legends were up in that one. Yeah. That was the Pink Palace it was nicknamed because mm. the walls were painted pink. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, yeah, so up up in there, and at the time they don't. They've got very high walls. They're about four meters. Ah, oh. yeah. No, no, about six They'd meters be high. Six, yeah, from what I saw. <clears throat> yeah, about six meters high. Yeah, but they didn't have barbed wire across it. Mm. And what happened was, <clears throat> they had an inmate who's a really good artist paint a mural on the back wall of the. Yeah, I saw the, the mural. Yeah. yeah, you could see that. Yeah. So on the right side of that mural, he had a scaffold because he was up there doing the um, the painting. Surely this this seems like a big fuck up on the prison's point of like, hey, maybe don't build a ladder on the inside yeah, yeah, of the yeah. fucking prison. But that's, I mean, because they trust them so much. You yeah. Know? And as far as I know, the scaffold was left in the the right corner of it. Yeah. And um, old mate who escaped, he um, <clears throat> hit the scaffold, mm. climbed up it. As far as I know, he had like a rope tied together out of sheets like yeah. the, the good old you know jailbreak rope yeah real cartoon shit yeah yeah and he climbed up tied on scaled down the other side 
And then when he got out of the jail, the screws ch- were chasing him. Yeah. And we, but he was really fit because he just spent the last year yeah. getting ready for this moment. So we just did laps around the car park and tied all the screws out. Oh, genius. Yeah. He until, just ran a marathon. Did, yeah, just did a marathon, tied all the screws out so they're sitting on the ground like catching their breath and then he ducked off into the bush. Yeah. Mm. But there's one big problem with that plan. When you get out of the prison... You're in fucking Tasmania. Yeah. Where do you go? It's a tiny island. Well, there was a guy that escaped a while ago and he had a boat ready to go and he jumped on the boat That's straight smart. away. That's smart. But then he went, I think he just went north in Tassie and got caught anyway. But Why did you get a boat? You should have got a car if you're just going somewhere else in Tassie. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, and so, well, this fellow that escaped, he, <clears throat> and, you know, when we found out, we we're down a medium, mm. we're like he's escaped and we're all sitting down. You know, they've locked us all down because it's yeah. emergency and all that. Yeah, what was and the reaction with the rest of the prisoners? Well, he's not. Uh, a lot of people were angry about it because because of this, they had to bring in these new laws and change it all it around. It fucks you guys. So all the old, like, lifers that are in yeah. there for life that have been well-behaved for 15 years and they're in minimum, they're in a privilege, privilege unit, they've mm. got, you know, a fan, they've got... They've got all the, you know, stuff that live pretty comfortably. Yeah. And then they got all sent back down to Max. And oh, that's, so that's where yeah. I got in trouble because the guy escaped. They had to reorder the prison and then they tried to move me because they're moving these guys from up here down to here and moving them to there. So they moved, tried to move me here. And, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Right. And so, we're, yeah, we're sitting in there just kind of like blowing out about it. Yeah. He's going, hey, he's escaped. And like... In your cell, you've got like a comms radio where you can call through to the head office. <laughs> <laughs> and so... <laughs> I already know what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, there's a movie channel in there. They've got like... Yeah. A, on the TV, you can turn on the movie channel. In the yeah. head office, they've got a DVD player where they put yeah. a different DVD on. Yeah. So we're just like calling through and they're like, um, you know, comms office, whatever. And we're like, can we put, put a movie on the movie channel? And they're like, yeah, which movie do you want? We're like... Great escape, <laughs> <laughs> and just laughing to ourselves, you know. Yeah. Like, I just, this uh, good fella that was in that unit, his nickname is Django. Yeah, he's this Aboriginal fella, and he was fucking hilarious, man. He was just stirring him up the whole time about it. And yeah, and then uh, the guy that escaped, his name's Graham. He, I think, he got out to the bush. He managed to break into a couple of houses, got yeah. himself together a traveler's pack, which was like marshmallows mm. a kid's blanket yeah some other random shit and um he lasted in the bush for a day or two and then they got him right and so and what's, then, what happened to him well i was when i got put down into franklin which was the worst part and that's yeah. like you know they put you in a room you put your hands through the hole in the door get the cuffs taken off yeah um <clears throat> at that point and i was that's only the in there for toughest an, prison shit yeah it's meant to be and yeah. um and the sil- cells are fel- filthy you know yeah fucking covered in shit it's horrible and um when i got was in there for a night graham was in in the same little part and he'd been in there for two weeks at that point right yeah and yeah so as far as i know i reckon he probably got kept down there for three months yeah at least and then that's serious that's like really embarrassing for the people in charge of the prison yeah think. yeah and well since then they've come in and they've put barbed wire around the, all the razor wire around the whole top of minimum yeah where he got over and They've taken a bunch of precautions to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Mm. So no more ladders on the inside. No, the no prison. more ladders. <laughs> yeah. And they stopped like all the sections and stuff where people go out for day release and stuff like that. So. Oh, that's a shame. There's a lot of people that were very angry about it. You know. Yeah. It, yeah. It really punishes the whole prison more than the guy that yeah. actually got out. Really. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. In some ways. But yeah. So. That was an interesting one. Mm. Mm. You said you, we've been writing each other letters. My favourite letter was the one uh, describing when there was a riot yeah. in the prison. That sounded fucking insane. That was awesome. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, I can talk about yeah, that. Yeah, let's so, do that. So what happened was... Because um, they've got the bup dose. Do you know what bup is? No. Nah. So bup is... Um, it's a synthetic opiate for opiate addicts. Right, and when you get, it's kind of like the new methadone program. Okay. Yeah, and when <clears throat> so it, it simulates the high of meth or not meth like opium, oh, opium, so, which is like yeah. um, codeine, morphine, heroin. Yeah, heroin. Yeah, yeah. that sort of uh, realm of drugs. Yeah, and when you get on, put on the program, you get given a um, you get given like a little strip 
once every day or two. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so there's about... Is that just to help with like withdrawal symptoms? Pretty much. But you you stay on the program. It's like a consistent thing. Yeah. And so, you know, out of the whole yard, there's like about 15 guys that are on the program. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the doctor decided that he wasn't going to give the bup dose that day. And he just went home and knocked off and told the whole jail, wait till tomorrow. (laughs) <laughs> and so, so you had a bunch of people going I need me fucking beep yep everyone just went fuck this we're not going back and the word got around and you know it's pretty much that was that was how it was everyone's not going back from the yard into their cell yeah into so a medium it's like an open yard with like six different blocks mm-hmm. I think it's six and um, <clears throat> each block has four units with yeah. about eight or nine cells in each unit mm-hmm but and so you walk out of the unit and it's all outside sort of thing it's not like a kind of inside if you if you know what i mean mm-hmm. like jail yeah and there's like a basketball court and a little grass area and a little training area and stuff mm. and on the grass area we kick the footy and stuff like that so yeah <clears throat> everyone's just decided we're not going back you know and so at 4 30 they call out food handlers to the top of the ramp and i was a food handler yeah and that's the signal for the food handle is to go up to the top of the ramp. Everyone else goes back to their <coughs> units. The food handlers get the food, come down, yeah. give out the food for dinner, and then go into the unit and it's locked down for the night, you know? Yeah. But so as soon as they've gone food handlers to the top of the ramp, <coughs> everyone just kept walking, just ignored it. No food handlers went up. I wasn't going up. Yeah. You know, if I'd gone up there, I would have looked like the one guy that's like. Yeah, it sounded like you were in a really weird position where you didn't really want to riot, but. Yeah. If you don't participate, then you're like a rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, it's, well, you it's, just, you know, it's like a strike, really. Yeah, yeah. Because the they they've taken away something away. They've taken something away from the prisoners. Yeah, that, it's a strike. They deserve, you're 100 percent right. And it's just like a strike. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can't not strike, even if it's not exactly your problem. Yeah, exactly. And um, so yeah, we just kept walking in circles. And the screws are all walking around going, come on, everyone back in the units. And everyone's just looking the other way. So how many prisoners are there versus, versus Two, screws? 200. Yeah. And there's about eight to 10 screws. Yeah, so they can't do anything. No. Yeah. No. And they don't have guns or anything. So yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Fuck, <laughs> that's great. <clears throat> yeah. And so everyone's just ignoring them. The screws have done it, walked around, tried to tell a few more people, come on, back in the units. And are they, have, they, have they said why they're striking? Or they just no, everyone just them. ignored them. Everyone just said, don't look at them. Just pretend they're not there. Yeah. Keep, keep, <laughs> keep kicking the footy. Yeah. You know, and um, so, yeah, the, after about 10 minutes of walking around, realising that it's getting ignored, the screws were like, all right, we're going. And they've left. And it was just like, what do we do now? Yeah, fuck. So no guards now. No guards. We're just all here. Kick the footy. Everyone's still just walking in circles. What time is this? About 4.30. Yeah. 4.30 is like lockdown. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so it gets to about, <clears throat> I'd say, 10 to 5, 5 o'clock. Yeah. And then there's these two little fellas. Now, there's one fella called Elijah, right? Yeah. And he's just, he walks around like this. Yeah. He's about five foot tall. And yeah. I, was in the, I was in a triple up with him when I first got into medium, which is a cell with two other people. Yeah. And he was a weird kid. Like, he'd sit there at night and look at his finger like this and go randomly at like 2 in the morning go, yeah, righto. <laughs> That's fucking weird. Isn't that straight out of the fucking Shining? Bro, like... <laughs> a, a, Stephen King bro, wrote that up and it was terrifying. A week later, yeah. I watched The Shining <laughs> on TV and I'm like watching The Shining and looking at this cunt and he's just lying in his bed just staring at the roof like that. And he goes, he's like, seen it, he's lived it. Yeah, he, but. Was, he was such a funny little cunt. And, um, and he's in there for stabbing a... Uh, IGA f- supermarket worker f- trying to get he was trying to rob the place ended up stabbing him yeah but he was getting the money to pay off his fines <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so man and oh he did some weird shit I ended up like throwing him out of the triple up at one point yeah. because he'd just do weird shit mm. and he wigged me out hard at first I was just like this little cunt's fucking tripping me out and it he- would be so weird to work out what what you can do yeah like to another inmate if they're doing some weird shit yeah like what are you what do you like there's like obviously you can't fucking 
bash and there's like the rules. Oh, you can. But. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, there's the rules, yeah. but then there's the rules. Yeah, yeah. Like the the inmates' etiquette and rules, and like, That's if it. you do bash him and it doesn't get reported, are you still going to get in trouble because of the other rules? Yeah, yeah. Like all that shit would be so hard to work out. Yeah, once you get your bearings in there, it's easy as you know. Mm. And um, but yeah, he was doing my head in. He he just say ran and then he just like laugh at randomly at two in the morning. And I wake up. And he's like, what are you laughing about? He's like nothing. <laughs> just thinking out loud. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's from a Stephen King book. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, and um, and then he'd get up and he'd walk down and walk out the door and slam the door, and then come back in, slam the door, not turn the handle at all, so it goes click like yeah, you know. And I ended up dragging his mattress out and made him sleep out in the kitchen. <laughs> Because I couldn't handle it. Yeah. <clears throat> what else did he do? He, um, because, <laughs> yeah, they've got the, the, the radio where you can call through the head, head office. <laughs> and one night he's got, he got butterscotch pudding. What the pudding. fuck did they think was going to happen when they put that in there? I was, of it's, course it's, everyone's going to fuck with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you fuck with them too much, you get in trouble. But, yeah. Um, he'd do shit like he'd finish his dessert and he'd get up and go press the button. Mm. <laughs> and they'd go, uh, yeah, what do you want? And he'd just go, Dessert was delicious. <laughs> and just go sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Did they say anything back? <laughs> uh, they just be like, what the fuck? Yeah, no. <laughs> just yeah, switch it off, you know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, back to the riot. We're all sitting around, mm. just like kicking the footy, going, what happens now? And all of a sudden, this little Elijah mm. and another fella climb up on the roof. Right? Yeah. And they're up on the roof. And they're standing there looking at the cameras on the roof going. And we're all going, belly up, fellas. So they're taking their shirts off and wrapped it around their heads. But yeah. not uh, like they've been on the roof staring at the camera for two minutes. <laughs> the camera's yeah. got them. But, yeah. you know, they're still bellied up. You know, yeah. they, they got the shirts. Just get into the heads. spirit of it at least. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, that, as soon as they got on the roof, the whole yard just started going. Well, we can do anything. Yes. This is sick. People are running in, grabbing mattresses, yeah. blankets, going and throwing it up on the roof to them. Yeah. Um, and then in comes the TRG. So the TRG is a tactical response group. Oh, no. So it's like, you know, the full black helmet, black gas masks, Fuck. tear gas with the, the black shotguns with... Um, Pellets? Big, no, rubber bullets. Rubber bullets, I yeah. mean, yeah. And so with what we, we're, from where we could, we could see their van, like their big mm. TRG van pulling in. We're like, here they come. How many do you think? I'd, I'd say there'd be... About eight. Yeah. yeah oh, that's not that bad. many. No. But, um, and so they were getting ready to come into the yard. And at that point, fellas started flipping table tennis tables on their side and bringing it onto the to the grass and flipping other picnic tables. Getting and, ready for the siege. Yeah, for this, this built, get barriers and everyone's yeah. going, stand together, boys, you know. Yeah. And, and what are you doing? Oh, I'm just there going, this is sick. Yeah. <laughs> I was just getting goosebumps. It was yeah. such like the pack mentality of it. I was just like, this is the best fucking thing that's happened in weeks. <laughs> this is awesome. This it's, is like, it was, it was... I was reading a letter going, this is sick. I wish I was there. Yeah, yeah. It was it was awesome. It was like, I haven't had... Go like, it was more goosebumps than I get on stage doing a show to a thousand people. You know, yeah. it was like, this is... I'm alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was great. And... um but are you like participating or oh I'm, I'm amongst it i wasn't i didn't i didn't destroy any property or anything like that you know yeah. i was of course not to any officers listening <laughs> yeah 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 but um i can't do shit now mm. <laughs> but yeah like, i didn't I, I was just amongst it like yeah what's going on what's yeah. happening and then um <clears throat> my mate this fella tomo is a fucking funny cunt Fuck, he's a funny cunt. He he ended up going up to the side to where this garden is, which is kind of the closest you could get to where the TRG were coming in, but it's still yeah. about 300 metres away. Tomo's grabbed a rock and lobbed it, and this rock went over, like, the prison garden, over the, like, walkway, which is all caged in and stuff, and hit one of the TRGs <laughs> in the head. Put that cunt in the Olympics. Yeah, he, like he's, a, he's he's actually a machine. He's Dude, like, yeah, 300 metres and hit one in the head. Oh, it Champion. Was the best shot ever. Gold medal. He needs one. 100%. And <laughs> did he take him out? Um, didn't didn't knock him out, but yeah. it clocked him. <laughs> so at that point, the TRG just started pumping tear gas into the yards. It was like, yeah. dun, 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 dun. Yeah. It was just raining tear gas canisters. Fuck. 
and then everyone's getting t-shirts and getting them wet and running out and throwing wet t-shirts on the tear gas canisters and yeah. stopping it and um the yard started you know uh everyone's there's tear gas everywhere so everyone's like starting to tear up and cry yeah and in comes the trg they've come in like hands on each other's shoulders full like swat team you know doing hand singles signals and wow they've come down the landing and at that point is where i went oh, i've had enough <laughs> I don't want to get shot with a rubber bullet. Yeah. And I shit him. <laughs> and I went back up to my unit. And, um, yeah, and then held the door open for the rest of the fellas that were coming into my unit. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and then shut the door and they locked the doors. The TRG came down. So if you weren't in your cell by that moment, you were just participating. Because you couldn't get in the cell if they locked them then. Yeah, well, that, the thing is we chocked all the doors. Right. Because they could only lock the doors once it's actually shut. So we put T-shirts okay. down so everyone could get back in. Yeah. But as they came down, like... Fuck, you guys were prepared. Yeah, yeah. You really <laughs> knew what you were doing. T-shirts on the tear yeah. gas, well, open the, the doors. The fellas that have been there for a few years have been through a few of them. Yeah. There's been, I've heard of other ones where they set the mattresses on fire and all sorts of shit. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, so they... Um, when they've come down, I went back to my unit. I was over on the left side, kind of closest, closer to the entrance sort of thing than the rest of the yard. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, was, I got back to my unit. But so much of the, the rest of the yard got caught up down in the kind of bottom side of it. Mm. And they all got, had to go and hide in units that weren't theirs. Yeah. And so they generally, I think they shot a couple of people with the rubber bullets. Yeah. And let off a few rounds and, and they came through. As we were getting back, they just, they shot a tear gas canister like about a metre away from our unit. So oh, our fuck. unit just got dutched out anyway. We're all and in there. And you can't crying. open the door to kick it away. No, no, exactly. Yeah, fuck. And his head just burning a hole in the ground. Like, um, yeah. And then, so it was about two hours of the TRG going to every unit, finding who was in there that wasn't meant to be in there and rearranging them all. Yeah. Taking them back to the, here and here and here and here. And um, <coughs> yeah, it was about two hours of that. And... Um, my mate Django, he was caught in a different um, yeah. unit and they brought him back in and we're all cheering, going, yeah, boy. <laughs> and he's walked into the unit and like they've uncuffed him and he's just walked in like, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was so much fun. And um, <laughs> and then... It just sounds like <clears throat> high school with, with tear gas. Yeah, it pretty much is. <laughs> it is, you know. There's some dangerous people, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But there's a lot of fun to be had in many ways. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then... Yeah, uh, after they put everyone back in the units, then they brought us dinner and our desserts. <laughs> and we're just... You still got dessert? We still got dessert. <laughs> and we're there just yelling at them, bring us our desserts, you slaves. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, if you if you riot and still get pudding, you I'm, fucking win. Exactly. Like, and Cocoa Pops. Oh, you win. Yeah. You got like, rewarded. Exactly. Cocoa Pops and dessert. It was beautiful. <laughs> like, if I got in trouble... Like, Cocoa Pops for me when I was a kid it was like a once in a year thing you know yeah. what I mean? so the fact that we got Cocoa Pops and dessert after the riot it was man you've had more Cocoa Pops than I have in the same time period yeah. and I could just go buy them <laughs> exactly you win <laughs> and you got to fucking have a riot mm. sounds great <laughs> I gotta commit a crime <laughs> yeah and then the next morning um, I come out for mustard and the screws have come up and they're all serious faced oh, I didn't finish um at the at the very end, just before they brought the desserts, they came in and did a set, cell count. And yeah. The TRGs walked into our unit and they've, you know, just holding us all at point blank and just mm. making us recite our names. And, and one of my mates is just stirring them up mm. and they're just, you know, yelling at him with a shotgun pointed at his face. And he's just like, what? What? <laughs> you know? And they're like, no, you know, just trying just trying to be as serious as possible, mm. you know? And, um, yeah. But the next morning we've come out and the screws are there doing master and we've gone so are we coming out today <laughs> and they're just like no <laughs> we're like okay <laughs> fuck yeah so so did uh did they get their their medicine then yeah the next day yeah that's good and we locked down for maybe i think we we're only locked down for like three or four days and then we're back out and mm. yeah lots oh. of tables t table tennis tables and <laughs> that sort of shit but yeah a small price to pay yeah for cocoa pops yeah and, and, and a great night yeah and just yeah it was so exciting so did so when that happens like did did like did they punish specific yeah. people like instigators yeah. or? so there are two guys on the roof and tomo who threw the rock 
Mm. <coughs> I think Tomo got put down into Franklin for a month. Yeah. And then I was in Supermax with him. Yeah. As well as one of the fellas that climbed up on the roof. Yeah. Don't know where Elijah went. I think he might have ended up back in Mersey, which is the psych unit. Yeah. Because I think he'd been in there a few times just because he was... He probably uh, went to the hotel that was in The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he, the he, Overlook. He was down in with Martin Bryan and that in yeah. the psych unit. Because at one point he did some other crazy shit. Yeah, he did if some you're not from Australia, shit. Martin Bryan is the is the guy who did the mass shooting that got our guns banned. Yeah, um, so very very hectic criminal. Yeah, yeah, but he's been in there for like 25 years now. Wow, and he's just like yeah, he's just like he's kept in a, the two by four meter cell. Um, same deals in Supermax. They get let out for tiny little amounts of time. Yeah, and they've heavily medicated him, so he's just. You know, really not not the man he definitely was. He's just yeah. um, just an obese mess. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so yeah, that was it. It was it was a good it was a good ride. It wasn't <laughs> as hectic as some of the ones you know I've seen yeah. in the mainland and stuff like that. And but it was still it was still one. You know. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it sounds nuts. So, um, what what was uh, what was the best thing about being in prison? What was the worst? I reckon the best thing was. Being free of responsibility from the world and its spiralling drama. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was, you know, and every, like, we're in such an age where everyone has to care about everything. Yes. You have to care about this, you have to care about that. Yeah. But when you're in jail, you're just like, well, what can I do? You know what I mean? Your world's much smaller. Yeah, your world's a lot smaller. And also, you're around a lot of people that you don't morally agree with. You know, mm. and you're not going to. Like, I've had chats with guys that are, like, fucking as racist as it gets. Yeah. It says shit that would make an SJW melt, you know what I yeah. mean? And I tried to chat with them about being racist and try to get through to them. And they're not going to change. Mm. It's not my it's not my responsibility to, to do that. So you just kind of learn to not... Like, people have their opinions, you know what I mean? And Yeah. And what are you going to do? Oh well, that's not right. You know, like yeah. What, what can you do? So, what do you mean that's not right? You killed six chicks. <laughs> exactly. So you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's there's a lot of things that you know you're morally confronted with. Yeah. Heard lots of shit. I was just like, well, but then you just learn not to care because otherwise you're just doing yourself. Um, you're just hurting yourself for the sake of other people. You know. There and are a lot of people that really do that. Like there's. I think there's, you know, you, you have, you have to, you can't not care about shit, Yeah. but you have to, you can't care about everything. I used to do it. I did a joke about it. I think in my third show of like, you can, you can't care about everything because no. if you did, you would just live a sad, horrible, stressed life because yeah. you can't fix everything. No. You can really care about properly, properly care and act on maybe three things. Yeah. And two of those things should probably be your like your life yeah. and things that are for you. And then you have time for a cause. Yeah. That's what I think anyway. Because otherwise you care about 35 things, you're not helping any of them, yeah. and your life is shit. Exactly. And I've been in that, like, I'm a very empathetic person. Yeah. And I like to, I really like to pay attention to issues in yeah. the past. And then, you know, and... Even the reason why I punched the guy is because I was so frustrated about vandalizing mm. venues. I, I can be a very passionate person, and look where it got me. You mm. know what I mean. And so I guess one of the best things was just being free from that responsibility. You yeah. Know, what can you do? You're just in jail. So, you, and everyone in there's like, you re also you realize, fuck, a lot of people have it a lot harder than you. You know. Like, yeah. Um. I was so lucky to get a lot of fan mail and from people that supported me. And there was one guy that hadn't had a letter or a visit in 16 years. Fuck. You know? And that's it's, sad. Yeah, yeah. And so you just like, um, you learn that to not dwell on your problems, you know? Mm. And it's so interesting getting out now and I see people that are like, oh, this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. And it's just like, yeah, but you're choosing to, to go down that spiral of drama and exaggeration and making it such a problem yeah where you know like i was hanging out with one bloke who's his missus is cheating on him he can never see his kids his parents both died while he's in jail and he's still walking around going well, i'm living the dream mate yeah. you know what i mean and it's like 
Because if you're in there and you start dumping your problems on other people, then that creates tension and you're just going to end up fighting, you know. And so yeah. generally, it's a very positive place in many ways because everyone is trying not to focus on the fact that they're stuck in jail away from their loved ones. You would have to be positive, otherwise mm. you would, you'd go nuts. Yeah, exactly. You would, yeah. If you sit like... And if you start sulking and just sitting in your cell, everyone will start being like, oh, he's sulking. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I watched a lot of fellas come in and they're just, they're shook and they're just like, mm. you know, they're, they're hating on it. And then, yeah, people get that wind of that and they'll start stirring them up for it and just makes it worse for them. So yeah. the best thing you can do is just suck it up and get on with it, you know? Well, I guess, I suppose it's when when your freedoms are taken away from you you learn what you you really learn what you can control mm. i suppose yeah and you have to learn how to control your your emotions you know because yeah otherwise you just send yourself crazy well that would be the only thing that that you would other than where you can go that would be mm. like the only thing that you're almost 100 percent in control of in there yeah. it's just you and your reactions to things yeah whereas when you have like unlimited freedom it's very easy to disregard what you can control, I suppose, yeah. because you could do it. You could do anything, mm. and often it feels like shit is out of your control because there's no like rules. Yeah. So you feel you it, you can feel like you're out of control because because everything is just so free. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I think that's what really freaks people out is the feeling of not being in control because so much shit's going on. It's hard to realize that they are 100% in control. Yeah. yeah, it's very true. And yeah, it's kind of like you think, it's, it's like going in, you kind of, you, you, you're worried about losing that freedom of being in control. Mm. But coming out is just as, it's kind of more anxiety in that sort of sense. Yeah. I definitely probably feel weirder coming out than I did going in. Because right. all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have to be in control again. It's not all yeah. control for me. You know, you follow this routine and you don't have to worry about anything, really, apart mm. from getting along with people and not getting in any drama. Yeah. And everything else is sorted for you and all of a sudden you're back out and you're like, oh, and it's just option paralysis because, you, yeah. you know, you're just a bit like, well, what do I do? I can do anything. I'll just sit here and feel anxious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. So, and like, as a, you know, some people might think nine months is a long time, but... In the, from being in there it's not very long at all compared mm. to what other fellas are going through and yeah so I can really understand how a lot of people get institutionalised when they've been in there for years and years and they enter the system when they're 18 years old and they're still not very not, not fully mature and yeah. make a lot of mistakes but <clears throat> by the time they're 25 they've done so much that if they slip up or do anything wrong they're born back into jail and then yeah when they, you know, all of a sudden they're 30 and when they get out, they'll have a panic attack because it's just, it's all they know, you know? Well, yeah, if you if you go in at 18 and you get out at 30, like mm. your whole adult life is prison. Mm. You don't know what real life is, really, because mm. before that it's school. Yeah. And then you've never had real life, you just had prison and then you get out into the real world and you're 30. Yeah. So you should also be a pro at the real world. Yeah. But yeah, that would be... You still, you still haven't yeah, grown in the world. Yeah. And so I, f I find with a lot of like guys that have been in there for a long time, you can tell that not immature, but they're just, they're mature in there, but still very, they haven't done a lot of things that um, a lot of adults' responsibilities people have to deal with. Naive so, to what the world is, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, yeah. Or, or just the responsibility of being an adult, you know, yeah. or what, what society assumes that we need you know yeah so yeah it's an interesting one so that's that's definitely yeah the most i kind of learn out of it um yeah so you so you think what do you think about the rehabilitate rehabilitation do you think that that happens there's a people can choose to rehabilitate themselves yeah but there's it's there's no rehabilitation really you can do a course. Like, they're doing barista courses, you know, like... Yeah. 
yeah, you've done something wrong. Make coffee. You know, like. so that's so fucking Melbourne. Yeah. You know that some chick from Melbourne with pink hair came up with that program. <laughs> Teach all the murderers to make coffee. That'll fix them. Yeah. And they get out and they're like, oh, I know how to make coffee and uh, prison wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I do with this skill set? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... um, But... And the caseworkers, I give it to a lot of the caseworkers because the caseworkers are good people. Mm. I, had, I had a good caseworker. Her name was Beck. And, um, yeah. and I asked her a couple of weeks before I got out. I said, I was like, Beck, you know, you, you're a woman. You're working in a prison around dangerous criminals. And I was like, what's the hardest part of your job? And she was like, honestly, dealing with the screws. Like, she Really? Said, she said, working with the inmates is, is a breeze most of the time. She said, don't get me wrong. Occasionally she'll talk to someone and she'll be like, this guy is a sociopathic freak that shouldn't be allowed a woman, near a woman ever again. Mm. And she feels like she needs to have a shower afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But generally, um, her main issues and was trying to just work within the system and, and the system stopping her doing sort of shit. And, do you know what remission is? Um, so so when you go to jail, they prison get, terms. Well, in, in, I don't know about the rest of the country, but you get remission. So I was meant to serve 12 months, but they gave me three months remission. And yeah. that extra three months <clears throat> is based on whether I'm well behaved in there. Right. And so I could have lost some remission for refusing the order and stuff. Yeah. But they didn't end up taking any remission. Oh, so if you misbehave, you could potentially do 12 instead of nine. Exactly, yeah. Right, okay. So yeah, it's kind yeah. of like an incentive to stay well behaved in there. Okay. Because if, if you've just served in that time and there's no incentive to be well behaved in there, you know. You're true. Yeah. yeah. So they'd have things where like guys have been there for a couple of years, they've got a few months remission and the day before they get out and they've, they've set up to get out, they've got a plane ticket to somewhere, whatever. Yeah. And the day before they find out, no, nah, they've taken two months remission. Right. And that just throws a spanner in all their works. They've lost money, all sorts of things like that. And yeah, that fucks your whole Yeah. And then the case, the case workers were just so, you know, because here they are working with someone, getting them pumped to this point, getting them ready for life, everything yeah. like that. And the day before they get out, they get told, no, nah, two months more. You know what I mean? And That's then, fucked to so, find out the day or yeah, two before. Exactly. That's cruel. It is. I watched one guy go through it and he... Do you know why he why they put the extra time on? Uh because he got, he I think he got into a fight, right? And they were like, "No, nah, you losing." I think he lost a month of remission, but he it was he was getting out two days before his birthday. Yeah, he had flights to Melbourne. He was going to the footy game with one of his oldest friends. Fuck. All these sorts of things. And yeah. the day before he gets out, I, like I just walked past him. I'm like, "You'd be getting pumped," and he was like, just staring at the ground. I was like, "What's wrong with him?" And then I found out. I was like, "Fuck, poor cunt." Like, yeah, you know, that would turn your whole. Even when eventually he did get out, it wouldn't. It'd be a dirty feeling. Almost yeah, it, that's like, it. It doesn't. I, this should have happened two months ago. It doesn't make, especially when it, yeah, gets in the way of other opportunities or mm. plans that you've done to get out and try and get back on your feet. You know, you probably wouldn't. If that happened to me, I probably wouldn't plan properly for my second release date because mm. I'd be like, well, I don't know if I'm actually going to get out. I'll plan when I'm out, mm. and then you're out and you got no plan. Yeah. Yeah, it's a stressful one. It was a, I, I like only found out a week before I got out that I didn't lose any remission. So for that, yeah. up until that week, I was thinking, well, I could could not be getting out in January. Who knows? Yeah, that's know? what and I thought as well because yeah. I knew that could happen to you. You yeah. were like sometime in early Jan and I was like, I'm not going to keep my fingers crossed because you'd already been out before. Exactly. And then you got fucking seven more months. Yeah. So I was like, I'll be happy when I get a text. Yeah, that's it. But yeah. Are there any um any crazy stories? Uh, let me let me see how long we're going for. Oh, okay, we're going for about fifty three minutes. All right, Jeff, we got time for one more story. If you yeah, have, yeah. if you have something. All right. Um. <laughs> this funny shit. So, <laughs> this is one guy called Keith. Yeah. Keith isn't very smart. Mm -hmm. He'd um he'd ask me to how to write the number 23 for the date and things like that. And <laughs> what do you mean? Like two, three, two, three, the yeah, numbers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not spell it. No, not spell it. Wow. Not, very, not very smart at all. Yeah. You know? And I, I went to, um, church and medium because it was a positive thing, you know, like yeah. you go up and the guys that ran the church were pretty, they'll just talk about life. And, mm -hmm. 
um, making better choices. And so, I, man, there's a lot of community to be found in church, especially yeah. in small communities, which a prison is, just exactly, a small yeah. village with and lots of rules. Exactly. And so, yeah, I'd go up to church just for something to do for the week. It was on yeah. Sunday Arvos. We get in there and Keith came, came to church mm -hmm. and then <laughs> he's sitting there and they're talking about becoming a Christian and being born again in the Holy Spirit yeah. and be, being a born again Christian. And, and Keith looks around the room and goes, do you guys mean that you actually have to get born again? <laughs> yeah. and we, we had that reaction we, we, we were all just like <laughs> and he's like looking around like this is no laughing matter <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be put into a giant pussy <laughs> yeah. and we're like you gotta climb back up there Keith like, fuck <laughs> <laughs> and um <laughs> and then he's like oh and he asked the guys in church to pray for him yeah so they prayed for him and the one thing that the guys from church they bring um they bring coffee. It's like an incentive to get people to come to church because usually we yeah. just get international roast sachets, which are trash. Yeah. But they bring in decent coffee. So right, eighty percent of the people in church are really there just putting up with yeah. listening for an hour just to have a good coffee. Thank God for coffee. Yeah, that's it. And then at the end of it, after they pray for Keith and they finish church, Keith just steals the coffee. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and we, all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like stashed it. In a, in a cup and then put another cup over it and we yeah. get back out and I'm like Keith he's like what and I was like bro you, you can't you can't steal, steal the coffee church. it's the church and he's like oh what I'm like mate you're dogging the big boy upstairs yeah and he goes oh you call me a dog <laughs> I'm like <laughs> And I was like, well, you stole the coffee, Keith. Yeah, I think if you steal from God, yeah. you're a bit of a dog. <laughs> well, it's dog backwards, isn't it? <laughs> True. Yeah, but, um, yeah, and I'm like, well, Keith, you can't steal the... You got them to pray for you, mate, and then you stole that coffee. I'm disappointed. And he was like, oh, now you're making me feel bad. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> Well, you stole from church, Keith. And he's just like, do you want some coffee? I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want the coffee. It's the principal, Keith. Yeah. And um, that's my phone. One sec. You grab it. I'll cut it out. So where was I? Yeah, I'm going. Do you want some coffee? Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. He's like, do you want some coffee? I was like, no, Keith, it's the principal. You know, you've got them to pray for you. Then you stole the coffee. And he's like, oh, and I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> and, um, you know, went on about it. And, yeah. And then... One day I was chilling with the, the bloke, Tomo, that threw the rock at yeah. the TRG. And he, he's a funny cunt. The athlete. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, a, he's, he's a machine. And um, we're sitting there and um, Keith comes over and he goes, Oi, Tomo. And he goes, what's going on? And he goes, oh, it's got up there. There's mouthing about me. What's Keith in for? I don't know. But he's yeah. he's done a lot of time. Yeah. I think his dad was in there for a bit at the same time as well. Fuck. So it's a generational thing and yeah. can't read or write, just, you know. There's a lot yeah. of guys in there that can't read or write or re like really feel for them, especially with some of them. They had such an abusive upbringing that their parents never read to them, nothing like that. Yeah. And then well, reading... What else is going to happen to those people? Yeah, and then but they, they get too, too, like, too old to really... And when it's entwined with a lot of abuse, education... It's yeah. like their brain rejects it. You know what I mean? It's it's an interesting no thing. Shit. Mm. Yeah, if the people who are supposed to teach you are the ones hurting you, then you're yeah, like one bloke. You don't want to learn. One bloke, and this guy was an absolute legend. I got a lot of time for him. Mm. Um, he couldn't read because his dad would just flog him and just go um, every time he go like, say this. He don't know how to say that. Flog him, flog him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was his upbringing. So you he, just associate reading with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um. Yeah, so I was there, was there with Tomo and Keith walks over and Tomo goes, what's going on, Keith? He goes, oh, this fella up here is mouthing off about me. Tomo goes, go bash him, Keith. <laughs> Keith goes, really? He goes, yeah, go bash him. He goes, thanks, Tomo. Starts <laughs> running off. <laughs> and then, then Tomo goes, ah, Keith, come back, come back, come back. He runs back over. What's going on, Tomo? He goes, how long you got to parole? He's like, oh, a month I can go for parole. He goes, don't bash him then, Keith. Don't bash him. And Keith goes, sure. He's like, nah, don't bash him, mate. You're, you're right. Just ignore it, Keith. You got parole, you know. And he's like, all right, Tomo. Runs back off. And he's like, Keith, come back, come back, come back, come back. <laughs> yeah, Tomo. He's like, 
Go bash. <laughs> <laughs> Did he, did he, he do runs it? straight over and starts bashing the bike. <laughs> <laughs> and the, co- the screws come in and they grab him and cuff him up and drag him off. And, oh, fuck. and we're going, on you, Woody! <laughs> and he's going, you're the boys! And he's getting dragged away <laughs> yeah, in cuffs. <laughs> oh, fuck. And he lost his parole. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, of course. I looked over to Tom and I'm like, you're a bad cunt. He was like, <laughs> Just wanted to see me do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some real sociopath shit. Yeah. <laughs> do it, don't do it, do it. Uh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That was a funny one. Oh man. All right. Well, uh, we've been going for an hour here. We can stop, or do you have time for one email? Yeah, let's do an email. All right. Cool. Um, this one I've been saving for you because um, I think that that we'll enjoy it. I haven't read all of it. I read so, uh, every now and then. I read an email. And I'll read the first few sentences and i got to go, nah, I have to read this live. So uh, if you would like to send an email to the podcast, send it to podcast at com. If you have any life advice or even a fucked story like this gentleman, uh, send it through. So uh, this email is called Parental Orgy. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Hey, Lewis, love your work. Death rest don't scare me. Was your best. Thank you. Um, speaking of scared, I will cut the crap and go straight to it. I think this is, I read this and then I stopped reading. I think my parents are fucking my neighbors. (laughs) And that's all I've read. I read that. I was like, here we fucking go. I think my parents are fucking my neighbors. I'll break it down. We had new neighbours move in November 2019. They're a middle-aged couple. Let's call them Lewis and Jazz. You fucking cunt. <laughs> all right, Lewis and Jazz. My, we're not calling them that, all right? We're calling them Tom and Christine, you fucking <laughs> asshole. My parents, I'm 17, haven't had sex since I was born, probably. You know what they say, married people don't have sex. Anyway, I have a theory that they, they are both extremely sexually frustrated. They work irregular hours... Um, uh, and they never have any date nights, even on Valentine's, uh, and they're still working. Not being ungrateful, I respect their sacrifices. Anyway, Tom and Christine bring out a hot tub that can fill about eight people. Uh, They arrived uh, in December. Anyway, I saw Tom and Christine canoodling and having fun, just first base, nothing raunchy. They invited my parents over when they saw them spying on them. My parents both declined politely. So they're watching. Okay. They're already, that's already very voyeuristic. Yeah. They're already watching and they're both probably thinking about it. They just haven't had the conversation. This is bad. However, after a late night shift on a Friday, I saw my parents step in the hot tub at 1am. I peeked through the window because they were making a racket with everyone else on the street fast asleep. I swear to God... My neighbor grabbed one of my mum's breasts and I'm pretty sure I saw Tom make out with my mum. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Here's the thing. They managed to make time out of their busy schedule to have a barbecue with my neighbors and I was invited too. Before any of them touched alcohol, uh, my neighbor looked directly at my parents, touched his nose and winked at them like some sort of secret code. They're definitely uh. fucking for sure thing is I don't care if they're swinging or not I just think they're getting into this hobby too quickly and they might not play it safe how do I address this with them seriously I don't mind that they're having fun and can socialise with our neighbours but how do I bring it up without ruining the orgy bro that might be the most open minded email I've ever seen in my life yeah yeah I don't mind if my parents fuck my neighbours I just want them to wear a condom it's very supportive yeah you might be the best son alive. Like, is he when he says like about them being safe with it, or if he's worried about it? Do you think he's more worried about like wearing a condom, or like about them having a big falling out over an awkward moment in the orgy, and then you're stuck living mm. next door to each other, and then it goes from orgy problems to your bush is growing over my fence, and it yeah. just keeps getting worse. And it might end up on a current affair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World's <laughs> world's nastiest neighbours, yeah. Tom and Christine. Where, where you, <laughs> the relationship started out fine. They were fucking in the tub, but then. <laughs> yeah, fuck. They clogged the hot tub <laughs> with cum. 
Um, I don't know how you'd... Um, I guess the best way to confront him about it would just be open and honest and just be like, all right. Yeah, there's no way to approach that softly. No, exactly. Maybe leave a a letter in the fruit bowl in the kitchen or like... Yeah, they'd be used to picking things out of the bowl if they're swinging. <laughs> yeah. So that would come natural. <laughs> they'd be like, oh, something's in the bowl. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a letter. Fuck, I thought it was car keys. Or just start dropping subtle, um, subtle hints and like... Yeah. Put pictures of like swing sets around the house. And, yeah, that's good. And then just, and you know, swinging much or, you know, just, yeah. just subtle hints and Waterproof so that they get lube. the girl onto it. Yeah. Um, I th- man, I think that the only way to do it is not in a cunty way. Is just f- when they're in the same room, just walk in and be like, "Hey, are you go- are you guys fucking the neighbors?" Yeah, just like that. Not yeah. are you fucking? Just go, "Hey, are you guys fucking the neighbors?" All yeah. good. I just want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'll know straight away by their reaction. <laughs> they they won't say yes or no, but you'll fucking know. Yeah. And then you can be like, "All right, well, calm down, guys." Yeah. You're Especially if they make eye fast. contact with each other straight away, like you know. Yeah. It's- yeah. Yeah. If they look at each other to see what the other one says, they're fucking the neighbours. Yeah. They've done it all. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know if I have any other advice that I'd give you. I guess just yeah. I mean, it seems extreme, but you seem pretty open-minded, and and there's, you can make it normal. I wonder how open-minded he is. Like, does he want to join in? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever floats your hot tub whatever well, fills your tub <laughs> yeah whatever fills your tub <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah fuck I guess I don't know The you know what the worst case scenario is here is if you end up with a sibling yeah and you don't know if it's if it's dads or the neighbours yeah 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 that's definitely uh, yeah well at least you know they're not far away when it comes to <laughs> Looking yeah. after the kids, you yeah, know what I mean? Custody. Like, yeah, you just, shared custody. You know custody. what? You just get rid of that middle fence. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all sorted. Exactly. You don't have to worry about schedules. You don't have to do the Monday, Tuesday thing. Open up that middle fence. You've got one house. You're living in a compound. Yeah. Hey, all of a sudden, you can start up a new religion. Maybe you've got a cult on your hand. <laughs> Everyone's fucking. You've got a giant compound. The you next can, thing you, to add in is a messiah. Can, they could move in with um, the old mate that was uh, fucking his best mate's mum while the dad was watching. They could yeah. All, like, Link it up through the, the podcast group and all join together and start... That's what needs to happen. I need to start yeah. up a giant sex cult. Yeah, that's it. And I don't join in. No, no, no. All I want is, just, right, I'm ahead of it. Yeah. I, I don't want to join in. I want no part of it. But I do want to know all the stories. Yeah, yeah. Just for the podcast. Just for the podcast. Yeah. It's like a sex cult and the, the purpose of it entirely is yeah. just good content for the, the podcast. That's great. Yeah. I would love that. I have my own head office. There's a big line of people <laughs> who have just fucked and they've, they're have they writing it down in dot points and they're like, all right, I'm going to tell it this way. And I'm like, oh, that's a good story. Yeah. That'll make next Sunday's episode. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, we've solved the problem. What I would like you to do, mate, is tell your parents to email me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ask them if it's happening and if so... Get them to send an email to Lewis for the podcast so we can um, continue the story. Just so we can chuck it in the archive. Yeah. Um, but my serious answer would be just, I would just bring it up in a non judgmental way. Yeah. And maybe ask them to do it when you can't see out the window. Yeah. Like if you're going to do it, maybe not in the fucking hot tub while I'm home, yeah. please, mum yeah. and dad. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, unless you you know, unless it's your thing. You or know? please only do it in <laughs> yeah. a hot tub when I'm at home. Whatever fills your tub. You can start, you can start your own category on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that helped. And uh, send me an update. I would absolutely love to know what happens yeah. in the next few weeks or months. If there are any significant developments, definitely send know. a follow up. I and I'll, I'll have to tell Greeley all about it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining me on the podcast, Thank mate. You for it's, having uh, me, and man. congratulations on getting out. Finally, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. I'm proud of you that you made it out Thank without you having much, to man. do more time. Yeah. No. And I don't think I'm going to be doing any more time. Mm. Um, you know, it's it was an unfortunate circumstance, and I, I do regret my actions. And I'm glad that I've I've served my time and I've got it out of the way. And from you know from here on up man got a lot of good plans I, I wrote a whole rap album while I was in there that's what I want to talk about what's yeah. uh, what's your plan now that you're a free man what I've are you doing sta- I've already started recording great and um whole album yeah whole what's album it called? it's going to be called Risden Wisdom love that uh, it's called Risden Prison was where you were yeah it's yeah, yeah. Risden Risden Prison and um so what I did I got my beat maker who's in Perth yep. to send beats to my mate 
uh, bird brain in Tassie. Mm -hmm. He got the beats printed onto a proper CD yep. at a proper company. Because obviously they can't just email you a file. No, and they can't do burnt CDs. Like you can get CDs brought in, but you have to go through a bit of a process. So I got the beat CD sent to my mate Dundee, who yep. is an absolute legend. He held me down the whole time I was in there, putting money in my account and yep. and you know just taking care of things for me and and mm -hmm. business with my hip hop while I was away. And um, so he got the CD, and then. You're allowed to have PS2s and PS4s. Right. But PS4s don't play CDs. Okay. Yeah, so I had to get a PS2, which is fucking impossible to find. Yeah. You, to, you know, you had to go to like four different cash converters and find an old... Yeah. Because they're 20 years old PS2s. Yeah, they are that. Yeah. They are really that old. They're old. I had one. Yeah, and they're flimsy. So like... Uh, yeah. Yeah, he... Um, he got this PS2 and the Beat CD. Surely he got you Spider-Man 2 as well. <laughs> Best game ever made. Uh, on PS2. Yeah. Yeah, no, he didn't get me any games. Fuck. There was a few games going around though. Yeah. I ended up playing GTA 3. Oh, sick. Just to listen to the radio. I just put it on, oh, sit in the no, car and that's listen to the such radio. such a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Because they always have such good soundtracks. Yeah, they do. Oh, and that's yeah, genius. I was like, yeah, reminiscing on all the old, you know, teenage yeah. years of playing Grand Theft Auto. Fuck. And, um... But yeah, so I had the PS2. I had to like them put in a request form in. Done. Yep. brought into the prison. Like, security go through it, and then finally I got a PS2 with Beats. So, so do they know that this CD has your Beats on it, or do they yeah. think it's like a legit? No, they, they knew it had Beats on, but it was. Yep. We had like a proper cover for it, and it was just called. I think my mate called it Bang Bang Instrumentals, and yep. made it look all legit. And it, it, there's no rules on what music you have in there. Yeah. It just has to be a professional, like a proper legitimate CD, and you have to have a receipt when they come in to show that it's been bought. Okay. Yeah, so... So did you have to forge a receipt? Um, he just went to my mate's skate shop and got them to print out a receipt for mis miscellaneous. Yeah. And just use that, you know? And who were they to say that we didn't buy it at a shop? You know what I mean? That's smart. I love the I love the hustle. Yeah. Just to get beats so you can write an album. Yeah. That's about as, as fucking hip-hop as you can get. Yeah. Is, is smuggling a CD full of beats into a prison. Yeah against the rules so you can write your album about being in prison yeah pretty much and and how to, so you wrote the whole thing in prison yeah and what's the what's the vibe of the album can you reveal too much um, about it's, it it's very story based mm -hmm. um it's not i'm not trying to do the whole well, i've been to jail and i'm a mad cunt sort yep. of thing now it's if anything like i mean we've shared some funny stories to the, like today but yep. there was a lot of tragic stories yeah uh, tasmania is such a small place that so many enemies and so many dramas from the outside end up coming in and yeah um like it, while i was in there a, a fan of mine got murdered on the outside mm. and i was in there with his cousins and um you know just all of a sudden we're in there and it's on the news and i, I recognize oh, so that the happened guy. while you, you yeah were so in. while i was in there i'm watching the news yeah. and this guy got murdered and i'm looking on the news and i'm like i know that guy he, he paid me to paint a canvas for his son because he was a big fan of my music. Oh, that's awful. And, yeah. um, you know, and then I'm in there with his cousin as well. And mm. and then knowing that the guy that did it is on his way in. You no know what shit. I mean? Because if just, you do it there, you're going to end up there. Yeah, yeah. There's only Fuck. one jail in Tasmania. So everyone comes to the same jail, you know. And um, so I've, I've written, a, like, there's a song on there about that. And um, I'm very happy with it. And it's, it's pretty deep. I'm, I'm breaking down, you know, I'm yeah. trying to break through, like analyze the cycle of the psyche of people that are caught within the system yeah and i'm it's generally going to have a positive message at the end that i hope can get through to like a lot of the guys that i was hanging out with when i was in there i was writing the music and they were loving it and they'd be there yeah. reciting my music as i'm rapping it in my cell and before it's even released yeah yeah wow. and i did a gig in, in jail did cool. i tell you this uh i heard about it yeah i did a gig on christmas it. wow in minimum and I performed all the songs that I wrote in jail to the jail. And when I did that one about the guy that got murdered, like the whole yard was like quiet and it was goosebumps. It was, it was a real, it's probably the realest thing I've ever done. Yeah. To be in jail performing a song about a guy that got murdered and half of the jails related to the guy that got murdered and the other half related to the guy that did it, you know? Fuck. And yeah. it's, it's, yeah. So, and my point that I'm trying to put through my music is generally to help people try and I'm trying to motivate people to break the cycle of coming back to jail. Yeah. Hopefully they can, they can relate to my music and my experience mm -hmm. and I can do my best to kind of give them something to relate to as well as advice in my music and, yeah. 
and motivate them to to do the best they, they can for themselves you know and because it really breaks my heart with some of the guys that I became good mates with and to know that they are like like one fellow the fellow that got locked back up he's been going to jail for seven seven generations you know like his dad was his dad's dad his dad Fuck. all back to near like convict time you know that's real australian culture yeah it is and and you know it's it's that cycle and especially with trauma and things that happen to us as kids we yeah. we repeat it even though we don't want to we know it's the thing that that has affected us and that's well known but it's lots of pedophiles were molested themselves exactly like and domestic abuse yeah you grow up around it you know and you, you become you're a victim of your surroundings you know so mm. i want to try and use the whole experience to flip into a positive thing if i That's can good. you know is it, it was a negative reason why i went to jail it was a there was there was some aspects of a negative experience you know being away from my loved ones and everything but if i can take that experience flip it on its head put it into my music stand up comedy help people understand more you know like when we we're talking about rehabilitation i've been studying how they handle prison in norway and yep. Norway is a completely different style of prison. It's not based on revenge. We come from such a culture where everything's revenge. Revenge. You did this. Oh, this is your punishment. Revenge. You know. And yeah. And so many. And we're raised to think that's right. This is what you did. You deserve this. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Some people will never be rehabilitated. Mm. It's unfortunate. And you know. And some people don't want to be. You know. And I'm not sure what the answer is for them. But. In Norway, where they have a lot more of... Uh, they focus on rehabilitation, not revenge. I mean, humans have been doing revenge for thousands of years. It doesn't and, work. And looks where it gets us. It never yeah. works. It, you know, it's a hard one. But in Norway, they've got only a 20% reoffending rate. Only That's 20, tiny. Exactly. Do you know what it is here? Above 80. Really? Yeah. Same Fuck. in America. And it, America, because we copy America, you know, Australia, yeah. especially with the prison. Well, yeah, system. if the reoffend rate is eighty percent, it's that's a failure yeah, of the system. I didn't know it was that high. I yeah. thought it was I, even like fifty is fucking high. I think if I think it's some. My mate um, Kane uh, was telling me if you go to jail once, there's like a ninety-two percent chance you'll go back again. Yeah, yeah, and that's and then the, that doesn't after work. After that, there's like a I think it's eighty percent, and it goes down a bit as the yeah. The stints go on, you know, but... Well, hopefully you're in that 10%. Yeah, well, I, I really don't think I'm going to avoid getting into any issues. I'm just focused on my music, my stand-up, and positive people, positive life, you know. I've, yeah. got, I've got no chips on my shoulders anymore. I think I, did, I had some issues when I was growing up that I was holding on to that ended up with, like, deep kind of resentment and anger that I'd, I'd yeah. taken out in different ways as I was growing up. And I'm at a point now where it's. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm completely in control of it and aware of my issues that mm. I'm not going to allow it to drag me into anything or to do anything that I shouldn't. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, when can people ex expect the album? So the album should be coming out around May. Yep. And um, at the moment I'm doing Dundee's album. Uh -huh. If you guys like hip-hop, check out Dundee. He did a free grill song while I was in jail. That song is fucking great. He did I, a, I posted it. It's like... That song, like, one of those few tracks where you, where you experience emotion as you listen. Yeah. A few. Yep. Like, not just one. Because normally songs are, like, sad, happy, angry. Yeah. Whereas that one was, like, a real story. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, he killed it. I, it got played on the radio when I was in Supermax at about midnight. Really? And, and Howe from the Hip Hop Show gave me a shout-out. And, and the prison heard that? Uh, everyone was asleep. Because <laughs> it was at midnight. Yeah. And everyone gets their medication and passes out. But yeah. I was I was at the there's like a little wall radio. I was there just listening to it. My Sally was just snoring his ass off. I'm just there like yeah. That's you know, sick. It was cool. And um, but yeah. So I'm gonna do Dundee's album. Help him put that out. The pre-orders are available now. Mm -hmm. And um, and then get straight into my album. I'm gonna do a few shows and like hip hop shows. Yep. With um, complete cursor a few other guys. And then, yeah, put the album out and then focus on stand-up. Yeah, mm. I've, uh, we've, we've talked about it a little bit. I want to uh, shoot a comedy special for you. Yeah, um, which is awesome. I'm yeah. pumped for that. And, yeah. you know, like, yeah, 
we're, we're, this is the tip of the like what we've talked about today is the tip of the iceberg of some of the funny shit that I've seen I have like maybe six to eight letters of stories yeah. that and are each, some each of letter the funniest shit 10 pages yeah. yeah some of the funniest shit I've ever read so yeah uh, yeah Greeley's got some stories. I'm I'm pumped to hear it, whether it's in music or in comedy form. So thanks for coming on, mate. Thank Have you very you on much. Again, very soon. And it's good to be back for you guys too. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Greeley's back. Make sure you check him out on all, all his socials, and the album's coming soon. I'll make sure to let you guys know about that. Uh, but that's Speared Sundays. Hope you guys have a shit one. Peace. Great.